Welcome to the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. This is my cat, Chispa. She wants to say hi to everyone. There we go. My girlfriend right now is watching TV. She just got back from work. So maybe we'll hear her. Hi, Heather. Hi. Ooh, you did hear her. Glad her. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. Well, my name is Hobo Tom, and my girlfriend's in the background. She just got back from work. He's kind of having dinner. I already ate. I had my hobo meal, shoe leather, and squirrel or something. But again, welcome in. Please like and subscribe. Also, feel free to send an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And today I'm going to talk about Raw and SmackDown. It's really a unique dichotomy. One show is really good, one show is really bad. Or one show is eh. But let's start off with Monday Night Raw. Let's go in order. So again, you have an opening with Elias. It's good, but it's good at kind of old. Because all he does is run the crowd down. And I know he's stick now. And, eh, it's a good though. Again, this leads to Seth Rollins coming down. The whole schmoz ensues. Elias beats up Seth. Gender comes down and beats up Seth with Elias. And then Roman Reigns comes down and beats up Gender. And then, holla, holla, player! Kurt Angle comes in. Because we're going to have a tag team match. The Shield of Seth Rollins and Ro Roman Reigns versus Gender Mahal and Elias. And it was an okay match. Was nothing special involved, and I don't know. I'd be a little bit rough, but honestly, it was just really a ham sandwich match. I mean, it had some spots in it. It was good. I mean, Elias and Gender seemed to. Be better aligned than Seth and Roman Reigns. This is what it was. It was, a, it was a good opening. Again, just kind of getting old. Again, throw back to holla holla player player. Again, of just putting people in tag matches for fun. Again, it was it was, it was good. It wasn't anything special though. I mean, it's kind of a weird rolling because it's so it's such a long build up. Next pay per view. Yeah. Then we had Price. the more entertaining parts of the night. You have Curtis Hawkins comes in against James Harden the Jobber, and it was it was a good introduction. James Harden, uh, um, uh, Hawkins said he's not going to go zero and two hundred. He's going to go one and ninety nine. One and one ninety nine brings in the Jobber, James Harden being in Atlanta, and said. You're going against me, and if I win, tacos for everyone. Taco. But, again, kind of weird things happen. The match itself was actually pretty good. The match was actually fairly good. It was a cheeseburger rating. And this was mainly because it was just good interaction. The job were won. Not from just his own quality, but the fact that Baron Corbin interfered. And that was kind of the constable of Raw on Kurt Angle. Weird. I mean, Baron Constable, I guess, is now his thing. Yeah, whatever. Only because Stephanie McMahon couldn't be there. So if it looks like I'm doing funny things, because I'm, I'm back at work. So you're fired. Get back to work, Hobo Tom. Again, doing a couple things. But again, it was a good match. It was fun. The jobber won. And it continues the whole storyline. Now he's on 200. This means one day, Curtis Hawkins is going to get the roll-up victory on Baron Corbin. Smile to my face. There you have. The next match is Nia Jax versus Natalia with Ronda on commentary. Again, a, a kind of good match. It's a really weird draw. 
Natalie gets some <clears throat> some weird freak sniper shot injury. Hurts her hamstring. Pulls a hammy running the ropes. Which is just believable. It was, it was a kind of good match. It's kind of power and te versus technical abilities. It was okay. And then the, the end was weird because then Nia Jax pinned Natalia and like, seemed to be concerned about her. Her leg, like, Ronda Rousey came down. The match itself... Was a ham sandwich. And then they just fight out front of each other. Oh, I'm no, I'm more of her friend. I don't know. Holy stuff. Rhonda's good. Rhonda's getting good. She has to get a little bit better talking wise on the mic. Has to seem more natural more natural. Maybe not natural, but it just has to be smoother. And I'm sure that's gonna come with experience. I mean she has all the athletic ability in the in the galaxy. Of seven galaxies, but again, it's a talking part that gets you over. Just ask one of my favorite wrestlers. Ooh, yeah! The cream always rises to the top. I like the macho man. Yeah. And best promos ever. Watch those on YouTube. And this led to probably the most entertaining match of the night. Of Bobby Roode versus Strowman. Bobby Roode starts off with an interview in the back. Says, you know what? I have to pull a chick out of this robe if I'm going to have a chance against Braun Strowman. And it was a really good match. It, again, when you have these clash of styles, you have the tactician on one hand, the brute power guy on the other. And it's great to see the way they interact. Especially Bobby Roode. The best, the spot of the night. He sets up a ladder. Goads Braun Strowman to run around the ring, slides underneath the rider. What you gotta do now, big boy? Braun double axe handle smashes the ladder and Bobby Roode's. Because that was his plan. His plan did not work. No bueno. Again, Braun Strowman picked up the ring, win. It was good though. It was a good clash of styles. That's a surf and turf. And this led to the Tag Team Royal Rumble. There are no good tag teams on Raw. And the one good tag team, the Revival, come on, like, weird trunks. Normally they just wear the solid black. But this time they had, like, multicolored. I don't know. I didn't get it. I don't like what they're doing with the Revival. They're supposed to be a serious tag team, and they're losing to a bunch of jobbers. Or at least lower people. We'll call them jobbers. Definitely not the quality they have. It's just like when they come up from Mega NXT, they don't know what to do with them. Yeah, put them, put them in a Royal Rumble. That fixes everything. Again, the last entrance. Again, you have the normal cast of characters. You have the Fashion Police, Titus Worldwide, Slater and Rhino, the B Team, Revival. Dolphin Drew. That was okay. Good thing is it was a little tease, but again, n nothing great, nothing spectacular. So again, and I do like the use of my props. Well, ham sandwich rating, nothing great. Ham sandwich was okay. A little bit better than just soup. That might be the next one. Again, it was okay. It is what it was. After that, we have a six-woman tag match. Again, this Raw wasn't very good. And again, holla, holla, player, player. You know what you're going to get if you're a holla, holla, player, player? This. A ham sandwich. They could do so much better. But they don't. We have the Riot Squad versus Alexa Bliss, Sasha Banks, and Ember Moon. Alexa Bliss goes out with an injury. Fake heel move freaking from heel 102 class. Not even a 200 level class. It's the a, it's a next step above knowing to run down your opponent and run down the audience. Oh, you people are dirty and disgusting. 
Except for Philadelphia fans. You are all dirty and disgusting. Never going to win anything. Refuse to check the White House and boo Santa. Stupid freaking Philly. Fudgy, disgusting, dirty, drunk Philly fans. They never win anything again. So again, it comes out. And the right squad, it was okay. Alexa Bliss hobbled back to the, to the dressing room area. Bailey comes out. Yay, hugs everyone, hugs her teammates. Does a belly to belly, belly to belly suplex. Again, bad finisher. Everyone does belly to belly suplexes. I don't know why I can finish anyone. A belly, a, a Bailey Buster. Ooh, a brain buster by Bailey. That's good. Don't take my ideas. If you do, send me one quarter. One shiny quarter is all I ask, WWE. So that was okay. Again, ham sandwich. Bailey won. Kind of teased a little bit backstage. Because then you had Baron Corbin say, Oh, you can't have that win. Constable on left butt hair. <laughs> It is what it was. It was okay. Then you had a Sami Zayn, Bobby Lashley, blah. Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor. Again, please send me comments. I don't think these two have ever wrestled against each other. Even when it was Kevin Steen and Ferguson DeVitt, I think. It was Prince DeVitt or, or, or Fergie DeVitt. Ferguson DeVitt. I mean, I ever wrestled in the in the minor in the minors or in the indie scene. Again, this was a highlight of the match. Unfortunately, for every highlight, there's a down. Finn Bloor not winning money in the bank. He already went up the ladder. Number one crime. He held the prize before he won it. He's not gonna win. So we'll see who wins money in the bank. Again, this was a great match though. It was great spots by both two. Both two can really wrestle. Kevin Owens can, can talk anyone's ear off. So good. So good as Kevin Owens. I mean, Finn, Finn Bloor's wrestling ability is great. Sometimes I just wish that the WWE would let them wrestle because I think we've only seen 30% of what Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens could do, and 15% of what Finn Bloor could do. So again, Highs and lows. Again, a very weird raw. Again, this whole lead up to Money in the Bank just seems so long and drawn out. Next week, I was mistaken because next week is the Go Home Show. And back for part two. Again, my name is Hobo Tom. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'm getting famous a little bit. I think the one person at the gym now knows me as Hobo Tom. And if she ever does subscribe to my YouTube channel, she shall get a shout out. Because the oh, couple things of news. WWE is coming to town July 29th, which is a Sunday. WWE Live on the beach. New Japan's coming at the end of the month, I think the 29th of June. There is SmackDown in both Tampa and Orlando. So again, it should be interesting. Maybe I'll see if I can get a picture with me and some wrestler, because I think the one-time wrestlers do come to the gym I go to. So again, my coworker said, Hobo Tom. I like that. Getting famous. Going to be internet famous as Hobo Tom in Daytona Beach. Yes. But let's get on to the real thing again. Please like, share, subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment and send an email. Again, Nostrand, thank you very much for sending your emails um, to address your email because it is the second part of the show. Unfortunately, I will not be going to the Mayan Classic. That's in full sale. And it's August 8th and 9th, I think. I think I have to, I probably have to work there. They just like to break people. They've instituted kind of new work policies where you can't take too many days off. The boss yells at you. And it's more than the finger wag. It's more than the finger shame. 
Well, you're fired! Get out of here, you hobo! So again, I can't take too many days off from, from my other job, which... Uh, you can ask my girlfriend. But, it is what it is. Do you have to make money? It's just not enough collecting aluminum cans off, cans off the street. Well, I would like to thank President Donald Trump for raising the price of aluminum. I like that. And, of course, having more domestic aluminum, more imported aluminum. Again, I know a little bit about economics. Again, feel free what you want to say about presidents. Eh, not bad. But this show is not about presidents or politics. This is about wrestling. For I am Hobo Tom. My girlfriend. Hi, Heather. Hi. Again, just came back from her real job. I was watching TV and eating some yummy food. And maybe she'll leave some on the plate. The cat will. We'll see. We have now time to talk about SmackDown, which was by far the much more entertaining show of the two. It's weird. It's like they go back and forth between Raw and SmackDown every so often. One's good, one's bad, one's bad, one's good. And SmackDown is better of the two. And I can live with that. Yeah, it looks like I'm doing funny things because I am. I'm trying to get some other work done. This way I can be going to wrestling events. Then so please like and subscribe. Hopefully one day we'll be monetized and we'll be able to receive super chats. That way I can do this more consistently. And again, it's always fun. <laughs> My job will be talking about pro wrestling. Yeah. One day you'll get an in, 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 inside the Hobo Productions studios. Of how these videos are actually made. <laughs> I do need some strobe lights for that maniacal laughter, though. But again, let's talk about SmackDown. For some reason, it seemed like a really small stadium. And again, I just can't believe it's there's one more SmackDown. I guess I got used to two pay per views a month. It is what it was. But I think there was some minor league hockey arena, though. It was in Corpus Christi, Texas. I know there's minor league hockey all over the place, or if it was a convention center. It just seems small, though. The, the ramps didn't seem as steep. And just really minor. Wait a second. Why is that ramp flat? Even at the Amway, where I go, at least it, it looks like a true ramp. But here, not so Again, might be a little different venue. I have to change things up every so often. So again, Carmella comes out. Again, gets sweated, which is good. Also, they start saying Asuka's going to kill you. Asuka. There was a weird... <laughs> I have to enjoy signs people make because they're just entertaining. One sign actually said, Bong Strong. Oh, what you looking for, sweetie? My, um, profile. Use the metal one in the garage. That's the one I use. Okay. I'll help you out in a little bit, sweetie. Ooh, cake. Or a cake. Maybe I'll put a piece of that later, too. Cake for the hobo. Yes. Let's get back to wrestling. I'm being sidetracked by my most amazing and beautiful girlfriend. Let's talk about Asuka versus Boo Sonya Deville and eh, Mandy Rose. For all my complaints about Sonya Deville, this match is a cheeseburger rating. It was fun. Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose came out in new clothes. They must have upped the, the production budget. <laughs> they must have found the same pennies I found in the street. Again, it's, it's, it's always nice to have fresh new outfits. Sonya Deville did take my advice. She changed her, her tights. Looks a lot better in them. Again, this match had really good pacing, really good back and forth, good teasing of stuff. It was fun. Also, because of the signs, happy birthday, Johnny. 
Happy birthday. Carmela was just being a distraction. She, I think she got up on the announce table and started to moonwalk on the announce table. Kind, kind of fun. Mandy Rose teased a butterfly pile driver. Ooh, pile driver. Besides the hobo choke, the hobo breaker. The pile driver's third go to wrestling move. Yes. The hobo breaker and the hobo choke, and then the pile driver. That's my signature. My finisher's a hobo choke. Choke you out, bite your nose off, pee on your back. So, who's the hobo in charge? Asuka again. She, she's good. She takes perfect bumps. If you ever want to learn the wrestling craft, watch an Asuka bump. Perfect. Asuka, of course, won. Pretty good. Next, we have a backstage segment with Miz and the New Day. The New Day are a riot. They are a bunch of big anime geeks. They, they said they wanted to learn Miz Jutsu. Call them the Hokage. Again, those are not the references. Again, back in my early days of my first thing in college was anime. Now it's gotten, eh, there's a lot of it out there. But I pick up little things every so often. I'm, I'm old school. But we'll get about that again one day later. Can you call them the Hokage? That's just funny. And then teasing who's going to be there for Money in the Bank. They might freebird if they do. If one of them wins, you might see a freebird rule. That should be fun. And then they could freebird the U.S. Championship. I'm gonna freebird the the WWE Championship. But again, he said, pick a name in a hat. Of course, Miz being the ever trusted heels closes his eyes, headband over his eyes. They switch hats. And good instead of picking a name of the hat, he sticks his hand in pancake batter. But yeah, it was fun. Then you had, again, a shocking match. A, a tease to, again, Money in the Bank. You had Harper and Carl Anderson in a match. And I guess probably next week it will be Luke Gallows and I forget his name now. Peephead guy. That's terrible. Fired from my job. Oh wait, this isn't a job. I was paying me up. This was a cheeseburger match too. And probably the only reason because because Carl Anderson actually won. Won with a roll up. I thought this was going to be a squash match. I'm just the only reason it's nothing more is because they should come out with AJ Styles for the Bullet Club. Bullet Club is too sweet. Yeah, it was a, it was kind of fun for a reverse squash match. It, Rowan. Harper and Rowan. So Rowan versus Gallows next week. Yeah. Good shot. Heaven knows they've jobbed up Anderson enough. Give them a win. Even though I don't think they're going to win. From there, Naomi has new ring attire. And this is probably just because she's with her husband, Jimmy Uso. Looks good though. I do like I do like and appreciate when they change things up. It makes it different, makes it feel fresh. This of course led to the mixed tag team match of Jimmy Uso and Naomi versus Aiden English and Lana's number one. Lana is the best. Or Lana is the best. Lana number one. Lana. It was Lana Day. And it was it was fun. And it's a mix, mixed tag match in the WWE kind of watered down version. And because it's a watered-down version, check this out, folks. It gets a ham sandwich rating. But it was fun, though. It had some, had some good spots. I'm eating English. There, kind of eats the pin. Kind of knew that was going to happen. They weren't going to have Lana lose. Yeah, it, was, it was entertaining. It wasn't anything special, though. There you have the contract signing. And this time they, they did probably the right way in the fact that they did it in the back versus in the middle of the ring. So you knew no tables were going to get broken. They, they had, I think, Dean Malenko and someone else kind of, kind of be security so that they made they ensured that nothing bad happened. 
and it was just kind of fun. This is what it was. Shinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles create chemistry together. That was that was pretty fun. And then again, you had another good match. And this I'm going to give a surf and turf rating for because this was Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. It was fun. It was good. It was like this is a classic face versus face match. A lot of respect. A lot of a lot of good sportsmanship. Um, they kind of shook hands in the beginning, I think. They cut each other's kicks. Said, said who, who can on the count of three open each other's legs on one, two, three. And they both put their legs on the count of three. Good sportsmanship. I love it. They did the little tea time thing. Um, it was a good back and forth. They, they know each other rest, they, wrestling wise, and the story they told showed that they knew each other's moves. It was counter after counter. It was, it was good. Um, a good, clean match. It was fun. Um, at the end, Becky put Charlotte in the disarm her only after reversing the figure eight. And the only thing that I think the crowd almost started to chant, hug it out. And if you do watch the Kevin Scampoli, the whole effing show, he would have said kiss and make up. But again, it was a kiss and make up or hug it out. Again, Kevin Scampoli, the whole effing show, another very good entertaining show. The Beanie Club, club, whatever it is now. Again, very entertaining to watch. I don't mind th saying people are great. Just all, if, given the reason, I'll also say that they're terrible. And Steven Larson, good. Kevin Scampoli, good. What's her face from New York? Eh. Who else is there? JD from New York, eh. And Grimm's Boy Story, eh. So again, if you're good, I will say you're good. If you're bad, unfortunately, I will also say you're bad. So again, it was fun. Then, this actually was the... No, not the main event. Maybe it was the main... Oh, yeah, this was the main event. Yeah, yeah, because before, kind of backtracked on my notes. Figured time gets short, and they just do a horrible job timing wise. You have two backstage entrances, and here we have another entrance. Who's this? Say hi. There you go. Again, a little backstage thing. But again, there were two backstage things. Interview with Sin Cara, S Selena Vegas, and of course Sin Cara got jumped from behind by El Hilo. It wasn't tranquilo enough. Then Andrade seeing Amos jumped him from behind. That's going to be a match for next week. I hope it's. I, hope, I don't know. We'll, we'll see where this goes. Then you had a big cast promo. Blah blah blah. Gets blah blah blah. Little guy gets beat up by big guy. Blah, blah, blah. Again, this led... And really, just because of the time, I think by now they only had like like 15 minutes and for these six individuals... It's a ham sandwich. And this could have been so much better. And I feel bad. I, I feel scared that Samoa Joe's going to knock on my door and say, why'd you give me a ham sandwich, you darn hobo? Choke you out, put you to sleep. Take your aluminum and your girlfriend and your cat. Take everything. No, I know. It has this Godzilla theme in the background. Again, it was New Day versus The Miz, Samoa Joe, and Rusev. And knowing that there was only 15 minutes left, I'm like, well, when's Miz gonna gonna eat the eat the pen? Because Samoa Joe's not Rusev. Uh, Rusev could have eaten the pen. New, the New Day were going to win. Again, you have your classic heel versus faces. Could have been so much better with more time. Again, kind of, kind of comedy spot. The, the ending, the lead up to the ending was that The Miz was going to throw pancakes onto Big E. Again, The Miz got distracted, kicked Kofi Kingston. Kofi Kingston was actually really good. Very, very good at, the, at deceptive wrestling techniques. I think he's going to do one thing or another. And really good. 
Well, again, it was a fun match. I think the time just killed it. So, really, the end all be all, because Miz is the not brightest heel, he threw the pancakes on his partners, Rusev and Samoa Joe. Rusev gave him the Machka kick. Samoa Joe did the Anton, both left. Biggie crushed him. And that led to the Miz eating the pin. Two day win. Yay. Um, really, that was it for SmackDown. Kind of the only other interesting news note is that next week, Lucha Underground is coming back. Oh, I miss my Lucha Underground. It's like televised indie promos. That's where I first saw Prince Puma, also known as King Ricochet, also known as Ricochet. And just fun. The wrestling flows better, a lot more action, a lot better pace. And they do the whole indie thing where they have like three, like two, two or three, like 15, 20 minute long matches and little promos, but it's really action focused. So again, I look forward to that. That's going to be next week. So next week, we're probably going to have two shows. We're going to have, of course, the Raw and SmackDown recap. And then we're going to have the Lucha House Party. Hobo style. Maybe I'll put in some bonus fo footage of my lucha nachos. Yes. Okay, well, again, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. And again, if you send an email, just like I did with Snostron, he sent me an email asking me if I'm going to the Mae Young Classic. And unfortunately, I can't. I have to work to pay bills and collect aluminum. But again, unfortunately, I cannot. I do hope maybe to go to the New Japan Pro Wrestling and maybe live and maybe an NXT and take my beautiful and amazing girlfriend. Hi, Heather. Take her to SmackDown again.